2018 Curio Review. This redesigned Rio could possibly be small, nonetheless it has a big attitude. Available to be a hatchback or sedan plus in 3, easy to understand trim levels, the redesigned 2018 Curio is often a sub-compact car which is simple yet sophisticated. On the outside, we have an all new look which is grown up and trendy. On the inside, the Rio is well assembled and is also relatively spacious considering its size. Under the hood, the Rio gets to be a reworked version of Gear's 1.6 litre four cylinder engine. It has slightly less power in comparison to last year 130 horsepower versus this past year's 138. But Kia says it chose to trade peak power for further usable power, and thus the Rio feels stronger on the lower engine speeds drivers encounter usually. The inside appears to have been upgraded, and although hard plastics still abound, it feels very solidly built. The redesigned dash and gauge cluster be capable of look upscale likewise, so whilst the Rio is often a budget priced car, it does not feel cheap. We think the lining presents itself a lot better than those of cars costing thousands more. Overall, we're impressed with this particular little gear. If interested in a sub-compact sedan or hatchback, the 2018 Kia Rio is completely worth looking over. What's new? The 2018 Kia Rio is completely redesigned. While it may seem a little counterintuitive to recommend the most notable trim connected with an interlevel car such as the 2018 Kia Rio, we presume the Rio X is only the most desirable from the bunch. The base LX and mid-level S are very fine, even so the X gets Kia Zuvo infotainment system, a 7-inch center screen, plus the addition of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. These features are worth the excess money. Additionally, the X gets upgraded safety equipment as a forward collision warning system with automatic braking. Trim levels and features The subcompact 2018 Kia Rio can be obtained as the sedan or possibly a Ford or hatchback. Both the hatchback and sedan are purchased in three different trim levels, base LX, mid-level S and top level X. For the bed's base Alex, standard features such as a 1.6 litre four cylinder engine, 130 horsepower, 119 pound feet of torque, a six speed manual transmission, a six speed automatic can be an available option, 15 inch steel wheels, automatic headlights, AC, a height adjustable driver seat, a tilt and leader, a vacation computer, a rear view camera as well as a four-speaker subwoofer with a five-inch display, satellite radio, a USB port plus an auxiliary audio input jack. The mid-level Rio S boosts the standard equipment with keyless entry, heated power mirrors, power windows, cruise control, map lights, a sliding center console armrest and closet, a 6040 split folding rear seat, an added USB port charging only, a rear view camera. Bluetooth connectivity along with a six-speaker stereo audio. The top of the line X includes the Rio S standard equipment and adds 15-inch alloy wheels, a chrome grille surround, fog lights, a tilt handless coping tire, a leather wrap tire and shift knob, a forward collision warning system with automatic braking, upgraded cloth upholstery, dual illuminated vanity mirrors as well as an upgraded 7-inch center display with Gear Zuvo infotainment system consisting of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The X's launch edition package adds red interior trim and partial leather accents. Trim tested Each vehicle typically can be purchased in multiple versions which might be fundamentally similar. The S with this review provide our full test on a 2018 Curio X 1.6 liters inline 4, 6 speed automatic, FWD. Driving. The Rio delivers newer handling than its competitors and several welcome steering feedback. 
the economy-oriented tires and strain-sounding engine maintain it from being truly fun drive an automobile. Even though performance is average, the vehicle feels better traveling than competitors. Acceleration Our Astested 060 miles per hour period of 9.1 seconds is average with this segment, which is also the most beneficial description because of this powertrain. The throttle solution is linear, and also the rear feels zippy in a thought and about but runs out of grunt quickly. When pushed, the engine is noisy and sounds strained. Braking The brakes feel solid and responsive and they are easy to modulate. Under hard braking the auto tracks straight, even so the brakes are dissatisfied by the economy-oriented tires. In our testing the Rio went from 60 to 0 miles per hour in 126 feet, which isn't harmful to the class, nonetheless it feels almost like the Rio could fare best. Steering The steering effort is pretty light and builds naturally. There's even some welcome feedback through the front wheels, which sets the Rio aside from most competitors. But it is often a bit darty. Therefore you wind up increasing corrections during turns as well as while driving straight. Handling Body roll can be a bit loose on initial turn-in, even so the rear settles and feels controlled through the majority of its range. Handling is predictable, however the economy tires protest loudly and understeer turns up early. Still, your vehicle's predictability and steering feel help you feel confident. Drivability The shifts are smooth, nevertheless the 6-speed automatic does have its work reduced for it. Unlike some CVT fettled competitors, it should shift frequently. It will hold gears but upshifts after you let away from the throttle. It does match revs for smoother downshifts but doesn't execute them particularly quickly. Comfort the manually adjustable seats are firm but supportive. Climate controls are straightforward, along with the system is a lot more than up to the duty of money temp within the cabin. The rear is quieter than many rivals, along with the ride is a bit more refined, if somewhat firmer than sub-compact buyers are accustomed to. Seat comfort The seats are firm but well-formed and supportive, with a few bolstering. The lack of lumbar adjustment definitely makes the seat less comfortable on longer drives. The headrest is aggressively forward, but it really has enough vertical adjustability that almost all drivers should be able to work around it. Ride Comfort The Rio's best trick is smoothing out smaller road imperfections that will make most cars in this particular class feel busy. The suspension feels sophisticated but this can be a firmer ride than most, although it takes the sides off bigger bumps, it's button air down so you definitely feel more on the road. Noise and Vibration Outside of engine noise, the Rio is very quiet at partying. In most road conditions, road and tire noise sounds more distant compared to competitors. But wind noise is noticeable within the freeway and many conditions bring the tire noise up. Even cruising, you are able to still hear the engine. Climate Control The Rio relies on a simple 3 deal system that's very simple to watch and understand. It's efficient at blowing cold and very warm, in order that it should keep program any climate. The rear defrosters are a little slow, but otherwise this is usually a very functional, basic climate system. Interior The solidly built interior looks more aged and upscale than that surrounding rivals. The array of driving position adjustability provides feel of your larger sedan. Still, the back seat is cramped, and entry may be tricky. The excellent touchscreen interface as well as simple controls really are a pleasure. Ease beneficial the buttons are clearly labeled and controls are all too easy to find. 
We especially just like the dedicated hard buttons for infotainment features and menus that allow you to bypass navigating the touchscreen system. That said, this is often a well thought out touchscreen interface that outclasses competitors. Getting and jetting out. The Ryo's relatively low roof means you need to duck a little bit even to get inside the front. Limited rear seat head and knee room combined having a small rear door opening have the back seat require some contortion for adults. It's nearly impossible to penetrate in tight spaces the spot that the door cannot be open wide. Driving position. The rear includes a lower, modern day mid-size car seating position as compared to the very upright position in many subcompacts. Fears a lot of seat adjustment both forward and back as well as height, and also the steering wheel telescopes quite far, which taller drivers will appreciate. Roominess The front seat offers good head and knee room, plus it feels pretty open. The rear seat is tight in just about every dimension, with less knee room and tow room behind taller drivers than something such as Honda Fit. The headroom in this sedan tester had also been limited. Visibility The roof pillars are thick all over, but they are positioned in front to make sure they don't create problematic blind spots. The good side mirrors assist with the side view. Rear visibility is very good, nevertheless the beefy rear roof pillars produce a big blind spot whenever you're overlooking your shoulder. Quality Plastics abound, but they are handled well, many are textured and so they all feel solidly built. This isn't a hollow or tinny interior, along with the overall design helps it be look mature, especially because of this class. Utility A decently sized trunk that has a wide, flat floor and the majority of interior storage alternatives for small items result in the key a practical little car. It can't really touch the Corsa leading Honda Fit, nonetheless its strengths lie elsewhere. Small item storage Again, the Honda Fit is king within this category, nevertheless the rear incorporates several cubbies within the center console, a smaller armrest box, a good size glove box, and door pockets that will hold water bottles in both leading and rear. You shouldn't get trouble finding places to stash your stuff. Cargo space. The 13.7 cubic foot sedan trunk is average, but Kia worked hard to make a wide, flat load floor in order that it's very usable. The seats fold down for longer time items. The hatchback's 32.8 cubic feet using the seats folded can touch space from the Honda Fit, in practice the correct answer is accommodating. Child safety seat accommodation. The latch points are clearly marked, but air are stuck between your cushions. Air are towards the surface, so that you don't have to dig around to locate them, however, are still less an easy task to get at when compared to cars with ports or flaps. Technology. What technology the Kia has is well thought out, having an excellent touchscreen infotainment system a surprisingly good stereo, and competent voice controls. Still, competitors offer more active security features and driver aids across even more of their range. Audio and navigation Kia figured drivers would prefer to use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto than buy a NAF subscription, so NAF isn't available. Audio quality is greater than most in the class with good clarity and depth and not much bass response. You can specify which sources the mode button will cycle through. Smartphone integration Android Auto and Apple CarPlay work smoothly however are only available on the highest trim level. The infotainment hard buttons make switching in and out of either easy. Below it's just Bluetooth. Our tester was included with front and rear seat USB ports, as well as a 12 volt outlet and a port in advance. Driver aids Forward collision alert is unobtrusive and returned no false alarms in this time with the automobile. 
we also appreciated the animated guidelines inside rear view camera. That said, competitors offer more active precautionary features and driver aids. Voice control. The array of controls is comparatively limited, nonetheless they were well with minimal misunderstandings when changing RC or dialing contact numbers. There are guides on screen and voice prompts, and also you can switch the signal from short to voice prompts as soon as you get the hang on the system.